Tonight on the Northwestern News Report, the beginning of the end. Crews are on site at Ryan Fields preparing to start the demolition. Plus, business is still struggling to boom. We looked into what the plan is to revitalize Evanston's downtown. And don't pause this, as some wildcats are working with the cats and dogs of the Evanston Animal Shelter. All that and more tonight on the Northwestern News Report. It's your news right, right now. now. Dilla Day, Northwestern's annual music festival, will take place on May 18th. Mayfest Productions, the student organization that plans the day-long event, announcing the date in an Instagram post over the weekend. Students are still waiting for the announcements of the theme and artists. This graphic posted to the Dilla Day Instagram features colorful flags and a background of trees. It's leaving some students in the comments to guess that it may be summer camp themed. Last year, the theme was Planet Dillo, and it featured a lineup of artists that included Briston Maroney and Offset. Ryan Field demolition is set to begin during the week of January 29th. Prep work began yesterday as fencing went up and workers began moving into the trailers. Demolition is set to take approximately four months, according to Mike Musel, the project superintendent from Turner Construction Company. Northwestern says they have met with representatives of indigenous tribes four times to discuss potential archaeological discoveries. NNN will have further updates as demolition progresses. Gabrielle? Earlier today, Northwestern President Michael Schill announcing the members of the recently created Advisory Committee on Preventing Anti-Semitism and Hate. In an email to the NU community, Schill said the committee will be co-chaired by two university professors. The 16 members of the committee include two students, two trustees, professors, and administrators. Schill says the committee will meet with various groups on campus to assess the climate with respect to anti-Semitism and other forms of hate, including Islamophobia. It will then make recommendations related to safety, along with other educational and institutional improvements. The announcement comes on the heels of a controversy playing out on, in recent days at The Rock. Over the weekend, images of what seems to be the Star of David and the word Israel were painted over the Palestinian flag. At the time, it's not known who is responsible for painting over The Rock. We reached out to student groups Wildcats for Israel and Northwestern Hillel. Both said they were not responsible, while Students for Justice in Palestine declined to comment. We'll provide an update to this story when we have more information. Meanwhile, SJP announcing this afternoon that they are inviting community members to add their handprints to the rock in, quote, support for Palestine and world liberation. The event, which, calls S which SJP calls All Hands for Liberation, will take place tomorrow from 11 a.m. to sunset. Last week, we looked into how the Evanston Public Library is funded and learned that EPL gets less funding per person than neighboring libraries. That's because the library tax is based on median property value, which is lower here in Evanston. I spoke with Library Board of Trustees President Tracy Fultz. Frankly, our library is uh, underfunded if you uh, compare us to our sister libraries in the region. The Evanston Public Library sets its own tax rate. The Library Board votes on what percentage of the city property tax it receives. It now gets 3% of a property tax bill for its funding an increase from recent years. We didn't increase the levy to the point that it actually covered all of our expenses. Part of the reason the library is underfunded, Fultz says, is because of how many resources it provides. EPL offers programs that increase youth literacy rates and provides employment help and social services. We are a separate entity from the city, although our resources are passed through the city. How can you increase the funding? That's the challenge. So it is taxes, and, or, and uh, donations. EPL is also pushing for more grants. I know there's things around STEAM, um, things around STEM, so uh, all manner of grant opportunities. Foles told me that the payment from the city was actually late last year, which means EPL had to reach into its reserves to keep operating. Gabrielle? 
The next few years may mark the end to City Hall meetings at Evanston's Lorraine H. Morton Civic Center. The city voting yesterday to approve a plan to move city offices from their nearly century-old building to the center of downtown at 909 Davis Street. A government estimate found last year that the Civic Center requires greater than $20 million worth of renovations to be brought up to code. The new lease space totals only 53,000 square feet of office space, as opposed to the current Civic Center's 112,000 with a proposed price of just under $2.5 million annually. A date has not yet been announced for the move, and plans for the old Civic Center are still undetermined. Jeremy? Medication alert for anyone who uses the CVS Pharmacy in Target. As part of a nationwide strategic shift, CVS Pharmacy is closing dozens of locations within Targets across the nation, including the one on Sherman Avenue. CVS acquired the pharmacy rights to Target Pharmacy in 2015, as part of a corporate expansion. The pharmacy is slated to close on February 27th. Customers can shift their prescriptions to the CVS store across the street. Gabrielle? Overnight construction on the Purple Line began yesterday. The Chicago Transit Authority hopes to complete track maintenance without disrupting riders' schedules. Crews are slated to be working on the track between Main and Dempster Street between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. on select weekdays and select weekends through mid-April. More information can be found on the Purple Line Improvement Project on the CTA website. Evanston is cleaning house. The city is looking for a new company to clean its streets and business areas. The city is not renewing its contract with Street Plus after deciding to reallocate money from the American Rescue Plan Act. This also comes after Street Plus workers attacked someone on the job last February. The Downtown Evanston organization is currently emptying trash cans. Coming up, a look at some new additions to downtown Evanston and what they mean for the city's business landscape. My narrative since I've been locked up and kind of made my transition has been like redemption, accountability. When I come into the classroom environment, every individual that sits amongst me takes education seriously. Trying to work my way out of the prison system was the most difficult challenge of my life. It only became tangible once I became a Northwestern student. Welcome back. The polls just closed in New Hampshire, and now we're awaiting for results in the first in the nation primary. When you vote on Tuesday, you're going to be making a decision. Do you want more of the same? That was former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley making her final pitch to voters on Monday. She's hoping to pull off a massive upset in New Hampshire, as pre-election polls showed former President Donald Trump leading Haley by double digits. The field for the GOP nomination has shrunk since Iowa, as Hutchinson, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis all ended their campaigns in the last week. The Illinois Republican primary is on March 19. Polls are predicting a likely victory for Trump. Associated Student Government, also known as ASG, will be holding annual elections this quarter. With pre-campaigning starting today, 
Northwestern is in for almost three weeks of candidate promotion until voting officially begins on February 8th. Candidates will be announced in early February. For more information on the election schedule, go to asg.northwestern.edu slash election schedule. Northwestern students are taking on climate change with school funding. The participatory budgeting initiative launched earlier this quarter. It gives participants the power to decide how to use $1,000 to install sustainable solutions. NNN's Raj Ganaker gives us a look into the plan's progress so far and what administrators and participants want to get out of it. Northwestern professor Matthew Easterday worked closely on Evanston's first participatory budgeting plan this past fall and decided it would be a great way to teach NU students about community engagement. It was basically giving people um, power over uh, a huge part of the budget. But a PB plan is no easy task. There's so much you have to learn to do it. Like you have to learn canvassing, you have to learn working in teams, you have to learn policy development. That's why Easter Day decided to run the plan through a class he teaches in the School of Education and Social Policy. You can both learn how to do like all the different parts of organizing, get experience with open democracy, um, and do it kind of at a, like, a more introductory pace. The class, called Civic Engagement, teaches students to get involved in social policy and how they can fix issues big and small. Students run a participatory budgeting plan and receive input from members of both the Northwestern and Evanston communities. Participatory budgeting is all about involving people who don't usually have access or control over money and putting their, that money in their hands. Weinberg first year Amira Grace served as the committee's event planner for their first idea meeting last Friday. Grace says though the plan is focused on fighting climate change, the true value lies in the lessons. Um, what's more impactful to me is understanding what the PB process is and um, uh, involving people in activism at um, a local level. Easter Day's instruction is helping students like Grace gain practical experience in civic engagement at the local level. It's this experience that can guide these students to lead projects making a difference outside of the Northwestern campus in the future. In Evanston, Raj Ganaker, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Raj. Easter Day hopes the program is successful and he can offer the class in years to come. Jeremy? A surge of small business closures in downtown Evanston occurred during the pandemic. But with lockdowns in the rearview mirror, the city hopes to see a resurgent. NNN's Kendall Wright has more on the business landscape in downtown Evanston. Andy Vick, the executive director of downtown Evanston, says rising rent costs and online shopping have led to the increase of business closures. If everyone buys on Amazon, then there's no way for the bricks and mortar to survive. Another reason Vic gives for the vacancies is the rise of remote work. They're working remotely or they're working in a hybrid situation where they're coming in once or twice a week. But there have been new stores opening. Skyzone jumped into businesses after they opened last month, right next door to AMC Evanston 12 that opened to viewers in November 2022. Vic stated that he hopes to see businesses old and new thrive as they bring a sense of activity to downtown. One spot he highlights is Seville Flowers, which bloomed in 1942. Some of that is the personal service that a place like Seville offers. Some of that is just the expertise, like when you buy flowers online, you don't have a chance to talk with a florist who's been doing it, whose family's been there for four generations. Shelby Forsythia, the shop's general manager, echoed Vic's remarks. You get the benefit of knowing they're being put together by somebody who, who really knows what they're doing and who really cares about the craft. The city hopes to attract NU students and Evanston residents alike toward its programming, despite the winter weather, as community engagement can drive these businesses. I'm Kendall Wright, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Kendall. We'll be sure to follow the developments downtown. Gabrielle? Focused on informing students on topics Northwestern, quote, won't teach us, Disorientation Week takes place through Friday. Fossil Free Northwestern is leading this week's events. They include a teach-in led by the Northwestern University graduate workers, a crafts community and conversation night hosted by the Native American and Indigenous Students Association, and a speed friending event allowing students to meet other peers and activists. The events aim to teach current students about the rights and wrongs of Northwestern's past and what can be learned from them. To find out more about the Disorientation Week schedule, visit Fossil Free Northwestern on Instagram. Coming up, Searching for the Summer, and you host its annual event to help students find internships.
my narrative since I've been locked up and kind of made my transition has been like redemption, accountability. When I come into the classroom environment, every individual that sits amongst me takes education seriously. Trying to work my way out of the prison system was the most difficult challenge of my life. It only became tangible once I became a Northwestern student. Welcome back. While temperatures may be a little on the warmer side, winter weather is still in full swing. NNN's Angela Zhang has the latest forecast. Thanks. It's officially been one week since the Chicago cold spell that forced a lot of us to stay inside. This week, however, we're looking at temperatures in the high 30s. No doubt that's still quite cold, but even for me as a SoCal native, it'll feel a lot warmer. Still not much sun, but we can look forward to Evanston's continued defrosting up to late next week, where temperatures might just touch 50. A mix of flurries and rain might come your way tonight and tomorrow, so take precaution on the roads, wear your winter gear, and stay warm. Thanks, Angela. I hope it warms up soon. It's time for sports. From the court to the pool, the Wildcats were in full swing this past week. Chris Collins' squad went 1-1 one one against two talented Big Ten opponents. The Purple and White took down Maryland 72-69 on Wednesday in a game that featured two of the nation's top scoring guards. Maryland's Jameer Young poured in 36 points, including a three-pointer, to give the Terps a one-point lead with 30 seconds left. But thanks to a boo-booey floater on the next possession, the Cats snuck away with a victory in Welsh Ryan Arena. Things didn't go as well for the Cats down the stretch in Lincoln, as Northwestern fell 75-69 to Nebraska, the Cornhuskers' first win over the Cats since 2019. On the women's side, the Cats had just one game. Despite a second-half surge, Northwestern came up short against the Spartans, losing 91-72. The Cats look to rebound this Thursday at home against Penn State. Also this past weekend, Northwestern Swimming and Diving narrowly lost its senior meet to Wisconsin, while the women's tennis team took down both Butler and Eastern Michigan at the Combe Tennis Center. It's time now for Under the Microscope, NNN's weekly dive into the latest in Northwestern science. First up, if you looked out over Lake Michigan this week, you might have seen the birth of a cloud. While the air temperatures may have dipped into the negatives, the lake remained a balmy 34 degrees. This difference allowing the water to nearly instantly vaporize, forming new clouds. Northwestern University researchers unveiling a novel method of analyzing gas molecules. Using an ultra-thin membrane, researchers can access a whole new world of physics in real time. This method not only helps research, but could lead to new methods of X-ray and light manipulation imaging. And last up, researchers at the Feinberg School of Medicine have found a new way to reverse anaphylactic reactions with fewer side effects in mice. The science uses decorated nanoparticles, which implant themselves in the cells of the user, preventing the histamine reaction usually caused by allergies. Studies in humans have not yet been conducted. And that's all happening under the microscope. Gabrielle? 
Northwestern held its annual Summerfest last Wednesday. This event offers students the chance to discover potential summer experiences both on campus and across the globe. And then Victoria Ryan was there. I think this is a great opportunity to see everything that is possible for a summer internship or opportunity and then going from there with that information. Northwestern's Office of the Provost Summerfest took place on Wednesday, giving students a break from the snowy weather to look forward to warmer days. So we like to say uh, you should dream about warm summer days on cold winter nights and that's what Summerfest is all about. This event gave students a chance to explore summer opportunities, network, and have their resume reviewed by staff members. Networking is very important. Um, <laughs> building your network and it all starts here at Summerfest at, with the Career Advancement Office, um, especially as you go about applying for jobs, getting to know more and more people who have connections to help you out as you further your career. Partnering with a number of campus offices, Director of Academic Initiatives Brad Zacharin says there are many resources available to students that might help them find their next summer internship. We want them to walk away knowing that there are lots of offices at Northwestern that exist to help them meet their goals outside of the classroom uh, and help them pursue what might be an academic or intellectual interest or a career interest. Victoria Ryan, Northwestern News Network. And NNN's Victoria Ryan joins me now in the studio. So Victoria, if students miss Summerfest, what resources can they use year-round? Um, so there wasn't really a website with every single site that was available at Summerfest, but certain offices such as Study Abroad, the Center for Civic Engagement, or um, Work Study, they all have their resources online. Great. Thank you so much, Victoria. Jeremy? Rent prices in Evanston increased by an average of nearly 6% in 2023. NNN's Sabrina Carson has the latest on ways Northwestern students can save money on rent. Rent hikes have left both Northwestern students and city residents feeling the strain. Everyone is calling the same landlords and talking to the same people. According to monthly advertised asking rates released by the real estate company Zillow, the average apartment in January 2023 was $1,865. Now, it's $1,978. This roughly 6% increase, making it hard for students to find affordable off-campus housing. Most students have an aspiration at some point to move off campus and to find their own place. And if you're watching rent rates increase, it might feel like that's at risk. Jason McKean oversees off-campus life at NU. He says students can use leftover financial aid to fund other education-related costs like housing. They can obtain a refund from leftover portions of their financial aid after tuition and fees are all paid. That money can actually be used for other costs related to your education. Additionally, campus events like Renting Declassified focus on helping undergraduates transition to off-campus living. The Renting Declassified event seeks to demystify all the things that students need to know about moving off campus. Helping students find independence, Sabrina Carson, Northwestern News Network. Renting Declassified takes place on January 30th at the Norris University Center. More events can be found online at northwestern.edu slash off campus. Coming up, a positive way to beat the winter blues, how students are helping dogs and cats in shelters. My narrative since I've been locked up and kind of made my transition has been like redemption, accountability. When I come into the classroom environment, every individual that sits amongst me takes education seriously. Trying to work my way out of the prison system was the most difficult challenge of my life. It only became tangible once I became a Northwestern student.
We have an update to a story we brought you earlier tonight. The AP is now projecting for former President Donald Trump to take the victory in the nation's first primary in New Hampshire. For students who are missing their pets at home or those who are looking for a way to beat the winter quarter blues, a solution lies just minutes away. NNN's Allison Miller checked out what it's all about. Oh, just a year old, sweet thing. Hi. Evanston Animal Shelter welcomes cats, dogs, and a committed team of volunteers. Board member Michael Calloway is one of them. Depending on the shift, maybe half to a third are students. Adoption counselor Vanessa Breckling says Northwestern students are among those leaving the largest impact. It is a, a big part of our shelter, being in a college town and having um, college students coming around and, and helping us out in so many different ways. All Paws In is Northwestern's Campus Animal Shelter Advocacy and Volunteer Group, making contributions in person and across social media. The All Paws In, um, they do a nice Instagram um, uh, showcase of our animals, so that's really nice. Volunteers take on tasks big and small, from cleaning cages to taking the dogs on four walks a day. It's really rewarding because probably a lot of students can't have animals in their dorms, so being able to spend the time with either cats or dogs and helping them out. Despite engaging with different animals, Breckling and Calloway share the same opinion. Volunteering doesn't feel like work. It takes you out of yourself, these animals. They completely take you out of yourself. Um, and whatever I've been thinking about all day goes way out of my mind when I'm here. Making a difference, one canine and feline at a time. Allison Miller, Northwestern News Network. To learn more about how to get involved, contact All Paws In or visit evanstonanimalshelter.net. Jeremy, do you have any pets at home? I do. I have a dog. What what's about he, you? What's your dog's name? His name is Teddy. His name is Teddy. That's such a cute name. I also have a dog at home. Um, his name is Einstein. He came to visit once last year, but I don't think you were around to meet him then. Maybe you didn't get to see him. He's got a way smarter name than my dog. Right. Well, sometimes <laughs> he's smart, sometimes he's not. I think it's selective hearing whether he chooses to listen or not to us. <laughs> and that's all the time we have for tonight on the Northwestern News Report. I'm Gabrielle Coriati. And I'm Jeremy Fredericks. For all of us here at NNN, have a great night.